Now to find the volume of a composite solid, like these guys down here, we're just gonna find the volume of each part individually. So it looks like what I've got here is this cube and then half of a cylinder. So let's go ahead and start with the cube. So the cube is five feet times five feet times five feet volume of the cube and 5 times 5 times 5 is 125 so that's 125 feet cubed now as for the cylinder we don't seem to know much about it but here's the thing is that I know that this distance right here is 5 feet because it has to match this down here and I know that this distance is five feet because it has to match down here. That is, the radius is two and a half feet, half of five feet. And the height is equal to the five feet high. So the area of the base is equal to the radius squared times pi. I just reversed the order there. I'm not sure why. 2.5 squared is 6.25. So the area of the base is 6.25 pi feet squared, except it's not because it's only half of that. That's half of a circle. So you've got to divide that by two. And you get 3.125. So the area of the base is really 3.125 pi feet squared. Now that means that the volume of the... Uh, of the half cylinder is going to be equal to 3.125 pi feet squared times the height, which is 5 feet. So we multiply that by 5, which I get as, and that's the volume of the cylinder, half the cylinder, 15.625, 15.625 pi feet cubed. So the volume of the actual object that we're interested in is the volume of the cube, 125 feet cubed, plus the volume of the cylinder, 15.625 pi feet cubed. You could factor out that feed cubed if you felt like it, which would mean that that was 125. My pen is protesting. Uh, plus 15.625 pi feet cubed. Which, yeah, that seems like a really obnoxious way to talk about volume. So we're going to go ahead and do 15.625 pi. We're going to get an approximation for that and add that to 125, which means that your volume is approximately 174.087 feet cubed. And that's where I would put my answer. It's the volume of each piece individually added together. Okay, find the missing measurement. So find the missing measurement of the prism or cylinder. And I think, okay. So we know that in order to find the volume of this rectangular prism, you'd multiply all the sides. That is eight meters times five meters times S is equal to 240 meters cubed because that was the volume that was given. Now eight meters times five meters is 40 meters squared. Yeah, so we get 40 meters squared times S equals 240 meters cubed. Divide both sides by 40 meters squared. Those divide out, those divide out. Those two divide out two of those. And 240 divided by 40 is 6. So S equals six meters. Now that makes sense. If you go back five times six times eight, five times six times eight is going to give you that 240 you wanted. So remember that the volume of a cylinder 
which in this case is actually given to us as 1,244 inches cubed is equal to pi times the radius squared, which in this case is six inches squared times the height, which we don't know, so it's t. Now six times six is 36, and uh, inches times inches is inches squared, so we're gonna get 1,244, this is odd, there you go, inches cubed equals 36 pi inches squared times t. From here, we can divide both sides by 36 pi inches squared. So everything here divides out. Inches cubed divides out inches squared. And 1,244 over 36, is that a nice number? It sure isn't. So we'll have to reduce that. I think by two, I'll start with 2. 1244 divided by 2 is 622 over 18. This is me reducing 1,244 over 36 by 2. And it looks like we can do it again. So we could have reduced it by 4. Which is 311 ninths. That is... T is equal to 311 over, and notice there's that pi in the denominator, 9 pi inches. Which again, that's not the most helpful measurement I've ever seen in my life. So maybe it'd be better to say that it's approximately 311 divided by 9, and I'm going to divide that by pi, about, oh, 10.999. Pretty much that's. 11 inches. It's just about 11 inches, just shy of it. Who knew 311 divided by 9 pi was so close to 11? Now you do. Similar solids. The prisms are similar. Find the volume of prism B. So they don't give us a whole lot of information here. Here's the deal, though. If you go way on back up here, where did they mention that? Similar solids. Two solids of the same type with equal ratios of corresponding linear measures, such as heights or radii. The ratio of corresponding linear measures of two similar solids is called the scale factor. If two solids have a scale factor of k, their so the scale ratio of their volumes is equal to k cubed. That is, prism B is some amount shorter in height than it is than prism A. And in order to get that, we're going to go 6 eighths, which is 3 fourths. That is 0 0.75. So prism B is 0 0.75 times shorter than prism A. And that's my K, by the way. K equals 0 0.75. And what it's saying is that the volume is going to be K to the third times smaller for prism B then prism A. So that's 0 0.75 cubed, which is 0 0.421875. That is, that the prism B is 0 0.421875 times the volume of prism A. So the volume of prism B is going to be 800 meters cubed, which is the volume of prism A, multiplied by k to the third power, 0 0.421875, which is 337.5 meters cubed. The point we're trying to make here is that this comes out to be pretty different so that small changes in your uh, linear distances can lead to big changes in volume. Even though it's uh, only 75% the height of prism A, it's uh, quite a bit less in volume, 42.1875%. Uh,
percent the volume of prism A. And there you have it, folks, the volume of prisms and cylinders. I hope you learned a bunch or maybe remembered a bunch. This is Mr. P signing off. If you have any questions, please send a message to your instructor. And I hope you have a most excellent and wonderful and just ever oh so fun and great rest of your day.